welcome back to Shadow Oops Ranch. Before I forget, we're gonna save. Because with these older games and me not being able to monitor the recording as closely as I'd like, I save before each episode so that if something goes wrong, I can jump right back here and not be sad later. Go ahead and take that. That's the thing that tell that um, holds these ripe vegetables. Now let's say you're a dumb dumb, like six year old me, and you don't know what ripe vegetables are. How you gotta figure it out? The phone will tell you what ripe vegetables are. Reading time. When it comes to vegetables, knowing when to harvest them can be just as important as knowing how to grow them. Some vegetables are ripe when they reach full size, others are best eaten long before that. Some should be harvested when soft, others are ripe when they're hard. It's important to know not only what vegetable you're growing, but what variety as well. And then it's going to walk you through what each thing looks like. Those are ripe bell peppers, early cow wonders. Rainbow Wahans, snap beans look like this, dry beans look like that. More kidney pinto, black turtle, and navy. Uh, some of these things I explain to you and it, you don't need to know because not all of these vegetables are here in the garden. But Nancy Drew Games love to edumacate you. Which garden am I at? The right one. Okay. We'll grab these two ripe ones. And you two ripe ones. The green beans can stay there forever. Ooh. Lots of ripe guys. And then I actually, I think, yeah. The rest are not ready yet. It's so hot, I should get these vegetables into Shorty right away. Pick those vegetables We're here. for me yet? You betcha. Good, Good for, for you. you. Now, second thing I need you to do for me is take this, go out to the chicken coop and fill it up with eggs. Just be careful of that basket. It's kind of old. And don't forget to build me that campfire like I asked. Right. All right. Nice of him to remind us. Now, before you go and rob the chickens, ha ha ha. If you take a look here, you'll realize this is broken. And in my first playthrough of this game, well, I didn't realize that actually. So, um, my eggs got broken and I was sad. But fortunately, every other playthrough, I remember that happens. That gate, that isn't very forgiving, honestly, in terms of, uh, you don't know to fix this beforehand. It's just gonna shatter those eggs, and those are... Hopefully you didn't find one of the nests with, like, five eggs in it, because, uh, you're not getting those eggs back. They're gone forever. There it is. Trying to find the right slot for it. Oh, not, not this one? Okay. There it is. That's a way too small. There's this one. There's not many left, and that's the wrong spot. I guess I should say get ready for lots of loud music in this game because uh, they didn't really figure out how to relegate the audio well, so it kind of blasts you when you're in the middle of conversations. There. Am I good or what? Don't forget to finish off the job by putting in the, you know, sewing it together, whatever. All right, and now we can grab some eggs. Don't mess with the evil chicken of death, because as the sign says, it is the evil chicken of death. Why they keep the evil chicken of death is beyond me. Are we gonna get enough on this go? Nope, we gotta wait for evil chicken of death to leave. Evil chicken of death leaves when you go back in the house, I believe, and then come back to the chicken coop. Go away, evil chicken of death. Sweet. They just want to trap you in case you're not thinking when you do it the first time. Got those eggs for me? Right here. Good, Good for, for you. you. Anything I can do for you now? Do you think I could get a canteen of water from you? Got one right here. You're good to go. Well, I'd better get going. Come back soon. Cool. While we're inside, before I forget, we should probably take care of roll top desk shenanigans. And you get to see how annoying they made the inventory. Lots of clicking just to use an item and put it back. Take that. And then this is an angry letter from someone like who- this Jane Nash person has it out for the Raleigh's. You don't believe in justice. That sounds very 2020. The Raleigh's sold a trunk full of junk to Mary Yazzie. Cool. 
And we got these weird things, which I don't think we can do squat with yet. Or can we? We could if we want. Those are blankets. So, we take these. And the clock! And the birds are intended to remind you of a good friend back at the... Well, I guess I can show you. This friend, the clock right here. All the colors are pointing in towards directions. So, if you remember this, you should be able to figure out which way they need to go. And I didn't write, th I didn't write this part down because I was, didn't think I'd get to this in episode 2. Um, but here I am trying to see if I can uh, figure it out. So we can go ahead and turn the blue guy to 2 o'clock. The yellow bird looks like it's 7 o'clock. And red, if I'm correct, we can just spin it until it opens! Sesame. This doesn't look like it was ever opened. Francis the Shadow Ranch. As usual, things did not work out like I planned. Just when I get everything fixed just right for you to go looking for the thing I hid for you, I go and get myself arrested. But no matter what you hear, nothing is gonna happen to me. I will be fine and we will be together soon, I promise. Meanwhile, you can keep busy by looking for what I hid. Start by using this piece of paper to mark where all the rock pictures are. They will tell you what to do next. Your favorite flowers and the flowers on your favorites start keeping them in mind too. I will leave a message for you in this here cell, just in case they decide to move me to the jail down in Tumbleweed or something. I like vexing your brain, because when you are thinking real hard, like when you're playing the piano, you are more beautiful than anything in the world. I am sure to be out of here before you find my treasure, but in case I am not, know that it is all yours, and that you are more precious to me than 10,000 treasures put together. 9, 12, 15, 22, 5, 25, 15, 21. Dirk. P.S. I do not, and never will, hold what your father did to me against you. That's nice. This is what's important though. A map. We'll figure out what that map is for at another time. This thing though. You can go, it's one of those push the numbers in, hope you get the right order on your first try kind of puzzles. And the order changes every single time you play this game. So, wow, I got lucky with that one. Cool. Get a little pokey thing for another time. And this is a journal. July 4th, 1882. Got sworn in as sheriff. It was the 4th. So it's like all them celebrations was for me, which of course they weren't. Francis thought up a song and played it on the piano for me. I was it this all song? Of it, but it was pretty. Not lucky to have her for a daughter. Herford Shoup come by with a plant he brung from New York, which he calls Harrison's Yellow. Right dead to me, but Francis planted it out back, gave it some water, and already it looks to be on the mend. She's 17 and can read and write good and knows her numbers. Herford's thinking to marry her, but I said she ain't of that mind yet. Oh, I guess I need to fill up the page. March 30th, 1883. Francis has got eyes for a young man named Dirk. She says he's from Prescott. Cappy says when she plays the piano, this Dirk makes everyone be quiet so he can hear her good. I ain't never seen her smile like she smiles now. I told her to bring him to the ranch for dinner, but she says he won't come because he's too shy. I wonder if that is the truth. April 16th, 1883. Got a letter from the sheriff over in Phoenix about this Dirk Valentine who was wanted for robbing two banks in a stagecoach. The picture with the letter looked just like Dirk, who Francis is sweet on. When I showed her the picture, she got tearful and run off. Now, Dirk is gone, and she won't say nothing about where he went. August 2nd, 1883. Dirk Valentine is robbing banks and coaches and trains all over the territory. Francis says he never ever shoots his gun and only steals from people that already got plenty of money. But that ain't true, because some of them trains he robbed was carrying money meant to pay miners or hard-earned wages. He is nothing but a no-good, greedy outlaw. But Francis gets real mad when I say that. 
I fear she is still sweet on him, and that she sees him when she knows I am busy, and gets letters from him when she hides from me. September 9th, 1883. Got hold of a note Francis sent to Dirk, and saw what they was going to meet. So I got a posse and we caught Dirk, and now he's in jail. The judge is coming next week, and I hear he is a hanging judge, so Dirk most likely ain't long for this world. Francis won't say nothing to me no more, and says she never will again. September 13th, 1883. Dirk sends a secret letter to Francis, which Mason got hold of and give to me. I locked it up so she won't ever read it. Francis ain't allowed to see Dirk in jail, of course. If she never sees his letter, maybe she will think he don't like her no more, and maybe she will stop liking him. Francis' ma would have known what to do better than me. I wish she was still alive. September 17th, 1883. They hung Dirk at noon. I thought I would be glad, but I ain't. September 18th, 1883. Francis took Brownie in my big saddlebag and is gone. She ain't told no one where she's going, not even Cappy. But I know she will forget Dirk, and when she does, she will come home because she's a smart gal. We'll figure out that I did what I've done for her. January 4th, 1884. My sister says her little girl Ellie got a letter that said Francis went east and it's not of a mind to ever return. I hope you see the truth, because I miss her so long. June 11th, 1884. The Harrison's yellow, which Francis said was her favorite flower in the world. It's a pile of brown sticks now. And that's the end. I really like that they decided to have people read these letters to you because uh, there's quite a few of them here in this game. And it really adds to uh, just amazingness that it's here. Oh yeah, don't know how to make a fire? I think the game will tell you that too. How to, never mind. <laughs> bank robbers? Denver bank robbers. Dang, never dirt to your ancestor. You don't have ancestors because you died. Uh huh. That's weird. Anyway, oh, we can listen to the radio. You like the radio? Here's the radio. Phoenix and surrounding areas will be hot and dry today with temperatures expected to reach the mid 90s by 5 this afternoon. After that, temperatures will begin to drop with a nighttime low in the mid 60s. Most areas to the south and west of Phoenix can expect more heat for the next several days, while areas to the north and east should also expect rapidly developing thunderstorms. So if you're going to be hiking, biking, camping, or horseback riding, be aware that sudden downpours and flash floods are always a possibility at this time of year, and don't go into the wilderness areas unprepared. We've got several livestock auctions in the area tonight and tomorrow. Small animals, including goats, rabbits, and chickens, will be auctioned off at Barney Hall and Apache Junction, with doors opening at 6 and bidding beginning at 7. Barney Hall is located at 1339 South North Street. Also tonight, there is a horse auction at Lobenthal Farms, located on Route 5 in Gilbert. Doors will open at 5 for stall inspection of sale animals. Bidding starts promptly at 7. At 10 a.m. tomorrow, that's 10 in the morning, folks, there will be a video cattle auction over in the Gemstone Room at the Blue Dog Hotel in Rittenhouse, featuring Charlay and Angus Breed and Stock. Hear that? That's the sound of happy cattle, healthy cattle, cattle whose diet includes Big Pink Mineral Supplement, chelated for easy absorption. Big Pink is the perfect blend of calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, chlorine, potassium, sulfur, cobalt, copper, fluoride, iodine, iron, manganese, selenium, and zinc. Minerals no bovine should be without. So for big results, stock up on Big Pink now. So that's what the weird pink stuff is. And that's all the radio they have, so... Um, where was I? I guess we're building a fire. So, I guess the only real annoying- well- Wonder who wrote this? Not a clue. This must be where Shorty wants me to build a campfire. Worry about that in a minute, I'm gonna steal the bucket. What are you guys- hmm. You say, huh, the ground! A little bit annoying part for me when I played this game the first time was the hunt for kindling. 
you need kindling to set the fire correctly. And there's a lot of kindling. Nancy will whine and complain if you don't have enough kindling. So find you the kindling. When you get to the ranch, find lots of kindling. It looks like little sticks. And you can poke someone's eye out if you ain't careful. When you get the kin- Actually, is this enough kindling? Yeah, I hope it's enough kindling. We're gonna try. We're gonna pretend it's enough kindling. You know what? No. We're gonna do kind of a favorite minigame when I was a kid. Oops. At least in this game. Uh, just swing the mallet and completely miss. And it's like, how do I miss? Then you can hit it some more. That could happen. And then you can... There's some other fun ones you can do. Like that, I guess. Uh, there was one fun one I remember. Like this one? Rats. No. This close. You were that close. I don't remember which one it is that makes it go towards you like crazy. Huh. Oh well. Let's just do it for real. I have a fun. Oddly enough, Nancy won't place the Something wood goes here. in the exact same spot each time, so ha ha ha. What's this do, out of curiosity? <laughs> that was the animation I was looking for. Ha ha ha. Oh, Nancy, how dumb you are. Well, let's fix that. Got the rest of this. Oops. Alright, fine. One dumb thing for the road. And now can we do it? There we go. Got the rest of this wood like a pro, please. The one wood. Oh, this is the easiest one. I had to double check my work just to make sure I wouldn't there. fool myself. Just call me Nancy Paul Bunyan Drew. Nancy Paul Bunyan Drew. Alright, well that's everything. Not everything. We need to fill up the bucket. Cool. Can I get more water? I need something to put the fire out. Got something to put the fire out, Nancy. Let's see. It's better. Actually, no. Whoop, uh, stop it! I want to put the paper down first. So far, so good. Let me put the kindling down. I need more kindling. I was afraid to say that. Give the paper back, rats. All right. Oh, I know which one I missed. This one. Cool. Now we put the kindling down. Not yet. Oh, Nancy, reset. Cool. So far, so good. That should do it. And the logs. There, one extremely well-built campfire, if I do say so myself. She built a TP campfire. Fire, Nancy. For oh those God. who care. I talked over Shorty. Whoops. Now, I'm double check we don't need to confirm with Shorty that we're done. Miss Nancy, how we may don't. I be of service? Well, I'd better get going. Don't be a stranger. I'll be a stranger. Can we Text? Can we do the the pre-riding test? I want to do the pre-riding test. Need something? Do you know anything about the treasure that Dirk Valentine supposedly hid for his sweetheart? Nope. Ow. Ah, somehow I knew you were going to say that. May I go riding now? Yep. If you got everything I told you you need, and you think you know your stuff when it comes to horses, old Bob's all yours. Talk to you later. Just stay out of trouble. Huh. <laughs> All right. Now, whoops, we need the saddle. Saddle her up. And we're almost out of time for this episode, so you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna walk over, we're gonna stare at Bob, and next time on Shadow Ranch, we're gonna saddle him up, take the pre-riding test, and go on to Mary Yaza's place. Sudden accent out. See you guys next time.